What? How amazing is it to have a saxophone player on America's Got Talent? I love it. Man, I absolutely love Avery Dixon's energy and his style on stage, it's fantastic. But how can we start to capture some of that energy and that technique and that style and apply it to our own saxophone playing? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about today because I'm gonna show you four building blocks or licks from Avery's Higher Ground solo, and then we're gonna put them into context and jam them out on our saxophones, you and me, so we can start to create that same energy and that same atmosphere and vibe in our own playing. Now you might be thinking this sounds like it's gonna be complicated, but don't worry, it's actually dead easy to get started with this. And if you grab your saxophone and play through this with me for the next few minutes, you're gonna see a massive improvement in the way that you approach playing in this particular style. Because hands down, this is my favorite way to really understand a player, their style and their approach to improvising. Now I'll be honest with you, I've been away on holiday, so I've not been seeing America's Got Talent, but I saw Jay's video on Better Sax about uh, Avery Solo and I thought it was fantastic. He outlines 10 points, and that's a brilliant starting point to understand what's going on with Avery. But I wanted to take things a little bit further and really dig into the nitty gritty of how we can use that style of Avery Dixon and apply it into our own playing. So right out the gate, pretty much everything that Avery Dixon plays in this higher ground solo is based on a single minor pentatonic scale. Jay mentions this in his video too. If you listen closely, it's pretty obvious you can hear it. So on the alto saxophone, we're talking about the C minor pentatonic. And for the tenor saxophone, that's the F minor pentatonic scale. Now, I've got a full PDF for you and a backing track that you can use to work through this jam session in your own practice room. You can grab them from the Sax School Locker along with all of our other free resources. I'll put a link down below, but you can also go to our website, saxschoolonline.com, go over to the courses page, and you can register for the locker there. It's completely free. So here's what the C minor pentatonic sounds like on alto sax. Now it's a really good idea to get familiar with those pentatonic scales over your entire range. So have a fiddle around with it and see if you can play that scale all the way up and all the way down. So let's check out the very first building block and this is the way Avery uses it in his solo. So this is what building block one looks like when it's written out, simpler than it sounds, right? It's really just eighth notes or quavers, but just watch out for those grace notes on B4 where we're going from G flat or F sharp down to F natural. By the way, if you want some tips on grace notes, check out my video that I did recently about grace notes. It's a technique that Avery uses all the way through this solo. So to move really smoothly from the G flat or the F sharp down to the F, I'm not using the middle finger, I'm gonna use my alternate G flat fingering here. So that's my nose picker or my index finger on the F, and then I'm reaching around with my ring finger and pressing down this alternate F sharp here. If you've got one of those keys on your saxophone, definitely use it for this pattern. Okay, grab your sax and let's have a play through this really slowly at 60 beats a minute. Now the real magic source with this pattern and all the patterns we're gonna talk about today is the way that you play them and the energy that you use. So I'm gonna play it through for you now at full speed, but I'm gonna use more strong articulation, more air, more energy, and see if I can make it more exciting. Okay, let's check out the second building block and see how Avery uses it. Now this is a really cool syncopated rhythm, and I love this because Avery himself uses this same rhythm at least two times in this solo. See if you can spot the other time that he uses it. Now the underlying feel of this tune, although it's written in 4-4 for you here on the chart, is a 12-8 feel. So each beat or each uh, main pulse in the bar is subdivided into three subdivisions. So we've got one E and two, one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 
da 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 And that shuffle feel, that triplet feel, is what gives this its cool sound. And that's also the rhythm that Avery is using in this particular pattern. Have a listen to the way it sounds really slowly. So again, we've got some grace notes here, just like in the first lick. We've got that G flat down to F natural. Don't forget to use that side key. And then between the first and the second bars, we've got another little rundown where he's just using a pentatonic scale, but doing it fast. Now, if you find it difficult to get the grace notes in or these runs in, don't worry about them. You can just leave them out for now and focus on the main notes. That'll still give you the same style and energy that we're talking about here. Again, this really comes to life when you play it faster. So this is what it sounds like when we're doing it at full speed. Right, let's move on to building block three and see how Avery puts it into action. Now, I really love this line. It's quite simple, but it's really just a pentatonic pattern. But because of the way he's using it, it's building up so much energy and excitement and anticipation. And it's a fantastic lick or building block for us to think about using in our solo. Now, Avery uses this lick later on in the arrangement. For our jam session, we're just gonna use the very first A section of the tune. But because it's based on the pentatonic scale, it still works over the chords from the first section as well. Let's have a listen to what it sounds like slowly. <laughs> How simple is that? And don't forget, we've got that little grace note E flat up to F on the last note. Have a listen to the way it sounds though when I speed it up and put some real energy into it. Woo! I love that lick, so cool. And you can just imagine how you can extend that lick over your whole range. Okay, let's look at building block number four and see where Avery uses it in his solo. Now, just like building block three, this fourth building block is so simple, but it creates so much energy and excitement. He's literally coming down a pentatonic scale with the addition of the A natural in there as well. But it sounds fantastic. And there's some little grace notes at the start and also at the end of this phrase. I'll put the metronome on and play it for you slowly so you can see how all the bits fit together. Now that run at the end is literally just a pentatonic scale, but going down. If you're finding that tricky, leave it out. But if you wanna try it out, just start by going super slowly and see if you can gradually pick up the speed so that it sounds more convincing. Okay, so I'm gonna play this final lick full speed with loads of guts and energy. Have a listen to how funky this sounds. Okay, I hope you're feeling warmed up and you're ready for a jam with me. Grab your saxophone and let's get stuck in. Here are the rules for how our jam is going to work. So we've got four building blocks. And in our backing track, we've got four bar phrases. So each building block is two bars long. So I'm gonna go first and play the first building block twice. Just gonna play the building block by itself. And then I'd like you to play that building block twice as well. When you do it though, really listen to the way that I've played that building block and see if you can copy the stylistic things I'm doing, not just the notes. So we're getting the notes right, but I also want you to think about the articulation, the energy, the excitement, the enthusiasm. We need to see if we can create all of that in our building block as well. Then I'm gonna go through my four bars another couple of times and I'm gonna use the building block as a bit of a launch pad for creating a four bar solo. I'll be drawing on the pentatonic scale for my note choices. Don't worry if you don't play exactly the same notes as me, just think about the idea that I'm coming up with and try to create something that has got the same sort of energy. So in my four bars, I'll be using the, the two bar building block and then building some other notes around it. I might use the building block first and put some other notes after it. Or I might put some other notes first and then the building block second. Or I might just use part of the building block and play around with it to come up with an idea. To be honest with you, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. Let's wait and see. But I'm gonna do that for four bars, then you get to do it for four bars, then I'm gonna do it a third time for four bars, and then it's you again for four bars. 
That's it for the first building block. And then we'll go through that same process with the second building block, just playing the building block twice, and then improvising, you improvising, and then improvising a third time, improvising. And then we'll do that with the third building block and the fourth building block. This is gonna be great fun. Now, most important, I want you to keep your improvising simple. I don't want you to worry about copying my notes exactly. I'm not gonna write out a transcription of my solo. Instead, what I want you to do is to come up with your own solo ideas based on what you're hearing. Now, there's no wrong answer here, but you'll get a lot more value out of this exercise if you come up with your own things rather than trying to copy what I'm doing exactly. Sound like fun? Okay, great. Grab your saxophone, whether it's an alto or a tenor or a soprano or a Barry sax, and let's have some fun doing a jam. So what's the next step after this? Once we've got these four licks down, these four building blocks, and we're starting to capture the style, then we can start to morph this into our own solo where we combine all four of those building blocks and start to create a whole solo that uses elements from it. So we're drawing our inspiration from those building blocks, but then we're making up our own thing. I'm gonna put the track back on now and just have a blow through a few bars of the solo, seeing if I can combine those different licks, those building blocks, see if you can identify each of those building blocks as we go through.
I reckon this is the sort of exercise that you should be doing over and over again. And that's why I've made the PDF and the backing track for you. Don't forget the link is down below, or if you're already registered for the Sack School Locker, you'll find it inside there. Print it out and for the next couple of weeks, have this in your practice routine where you're jamming through and coming up with ideas. Now I've got to tell you, the more that you do this exercise, it'll become easier and easier to come up with convincing sounding solos yourself. Plus, you'll be able to create that Avery Dixon energy in your own playing and how awesome is that? And then when you're ready, go check out this lesson next where we look at another jam in another style.